Good evening. It's my pleasure tonight to recognize a lot of important things at the high school. Uh, on behalf of the Jazz Band, I want to apologize with the four remote days that they had last week, and Mr. Blaylock was gone at an educational conference today. They weren't quite prepared to be here tonight to play for us. So uh, we, we, uh, we apologize because that's something everybody looks forward to at this specific board meeting. Uh, tonight, the first group I want to recognize is our student council. I have with us tonight our Alex Carfee, who's our president. Gentlemen, if you guys would just stand up. Brendan Siebel, Andrew Castellucci, and uh, Kaylee Barnes. Elizabeth Patterson is also a member, as well as their advisor, Ms. Stephanie McElrath. Every year, the student council is influential not only at the high school, but throughout the district, K-12. And I just want to give you some statistics this year as far as what they did. Uh, this year they collected over 17,000 items. This is one of the most that they have ever collected, just beating last year's records. They were able to establish a goal of packing 210 boxes, and uh, the EHS and EMS student council members packed 225 boxes that they, they delivered, hand-delivered to the Edwardsburg Food Pantry to hand out to the needy families at Thanksgiving time. Student council would like to give a special thank you to the maintenance department who helped transport all the box food in the snowstorm so it could be delivered in time and taking all the additional food items to the food pantry so student council members could help stock the shelves for the winter months. So thank you to all of our student council advisors and uh, board. <laughs> Next group that I um, want to recognize is our um, National Honor Society. And if those officers would please stand, Andrew Castellucci, Blake Ludwig, Brendan Seabolt, and Alex Carfee. Um, you, you've heard us share the stories, and every year this keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I know as a father, when I had to take the seats out of our van because there were so many toys that we had to go deliver, uh, it's quite a remarkable experience. These guys were able to impact 35 families, and the amount of, of generosity that they displayed uh, it's not buying plastic toys, it's buying boots, it's buying toothpaste and toilet paper and food cards that so many of our families are in desperate need of. And uh, I will tell you, it, as, your, as our students go through it, it changes their lives as much as it changes the families that are receiving those gifts. And to hear the stories of different students that teared up, to see the families tear up, it's a pretty emotional experience. So um, it, it was just, a, it's, every year it gets bigger, it's more impactful, and uh, these guys have done a great job. I also want to give them kudos. They did their second blood drive on Friday, 
and on a day when we were remote, they were all in here so that we could donate, or so that other students could donate blood, community members could donate blood, and uh, they were able to save 55 lives through the blood donation collection that day. So uh, thank you to our uh, National Honor Society team. Uh, the next piece I want to talk about is our advanced placement courses. Um, if you recall, five, this is our sixth year, five years ago, we brought advanced placement courses back into the district and uh, into the high school. And I just want to share some statistics and some things with you on the board up in front of you. Why, what are advanced placement courses? Advanced placement courses are, are run through College Board. That's the same organization that does the SAT. It allows students to be certified in high school courses that earn college credit and or qualify students for more advanced classes when they begin college. The AP courses are designed to give students the experience of a fast-paced, intro-level college class while they're still in high school. And the courses are taught and trained by our trained Eversburg High School teachers on our high school campus. And we have many of those staff members here tonight. Um, they would tell you the hours that go into preparing and keeping these kids up to speed as they prepare for that AP exam in May. All staff have to go through a week-long training. We ship them off and they get the, the necessary training so that they can teach the courses and our goals for our students to not only take the AP course, but to be incredibly successful on taking the course and getting that college credit. Why the advanced placement courses? Students with AP scores earn college credit before they even set a foot on campus. Uh, the AP on the high school transcript shows college students are motivated to succeed and taking the exam demonstrates students' commitment to tackle and complete college-level work. Students taking AP courses are more attractive to a college admission representatives. The earning the college credit or placement can open up time on the student's schedule, and students can graduate earlier than the typical four years. It also allows students to, to, to do internships and have some flexibility whether they want to study abroad and take different courses because they have some college courses out of the way. Statistically, those students have an edge in college. Research consistently shows that AP students are better prepared for college than students who don't take AP, regardless of their exam score. They are more likely to enroll and stay in college, do well in their classes, and graduate in four years. Up there is a list of our current courses taught at, eight, at Eversburg High School. We started out with two five years ago. You can see that we're currently up to eight. AP Biology, AP Calculus, AP Computer Science Principles, New this year, AP Computer Science A, uh, AP English Language Composition, AP English Literature Composition. Also new this year is uh, Music Theory. We've also have United States History, as well as any AP courses that students want to take in our early college. We have some that take statistics, physics, uh, courses that we just don't offer uh, taught by an Edwardsburg employee. Um, they can take there as well. Next year, we have to add two more. Um, we would like to add art history and psychology. And our goal is to, for every student to take an AP course, and you might say, well, that's unrealistic, they're not smart enough. When you take some of the music theory, the art history, the psychology, the courses that students are interested in, in addition to just the, the hard courses, it's, uh, you know, whether it be statistics or calculus, or um, these are courses that the, their level of interest is in. So how have we done? Well, you can see last year, 2022, we scored really well. Uh, you see the total number of exams is 152, and it's broken down there by each subject area. Below that is the average score. That bottom piece there, the, the amount of students with receiving a three or higher, most universities okay, will accept a three. If you're looking for a tier one, you gotta have a five, four, minimally a four or five, but depending on where you're going, if it's a Western Michigan, they're gonna take a three, an Albion College, you're gonna take a three. And so if you look at those bottom percentages of students and how they did last year, we were pretty successful. 82% of our students overall earned a three or higher on the AP exams. How have we done over the last five years? One statistic I want you to really pay attention to is in 2018, we had 67 exams. And at that time, we've nearly doubled that, and we have doubled that um, since five years ago. When last year, we had 152 AP exams being taken. And again, it breaks down the number of students that have a, a three or higher. One uh, graph that I want to share with you is how do we compare uh, we've always had dual enrollment, or not always, but for 20-some years, we've had a lot of dual enrollment, and that's kind of been our focus as a district. 
Um, when we sit down and we want to compare our SAT scores to districts that we achieve to be like, whether they're the Portages, the St. Joe's, uh, one statistic, you know, we have 12% of our students that take AP courses, as opposed to 24% of our students go off campus. When you look at the Portage Centrals, they have over 40% of their students are taking AP courses. And so we're still committed to offering the dual enrollment courses, but we also want to increase the amount of students that are taking AP as well. And what you'll find is many of our students are dual enrolled and they're also taking AP courses on campus. And so they're potentially their senior year of high school are earning five or six credits college, five or six classes, so that's equivalent to a whole semester of college credits. Um, now at this time, I want to invite up Alex Carfee and Hudson Haberlin. They're going to just share a little bit about their experience uh, with the AP courses. <clears throat> All right, so going into this year, uh, I've taken five APs and I'll finish out this year with seven AP classes. And honestly, I can say that they are some of my favorite classes in the high school. And now, these aren't really how a lot of people see them. A lot of people see these classes as things for nerds, things for, you know, uh, the higher up. And like Barkle said, the goal should be for everybody to take an AP. They, um, a lot of teachers, when I talk to them, it's honestly one of their favorite classes. They spend extra hours, take time honing in their craft, and really, you know, provide the extra attention to detail in order to ensure these students have the best chance with such a vigorous course and being able to, you know, get a high score on the AP um, exam in May. And really, furthermore, um, uh, these really provide, you know, a lot of readiness and, you know, uh, really make sure students are able to succeed once they reach that next level of education. And, you know, it's really, it's really rewarding. I mean, it really is. They are super enjoying to do. And even though I'm being pushed to work at the higher level, I mean, I really, really, really I'm super engaged during lessons. I'm uh, learning a lot more, able to draw new connections on stuff that, you know, sometimes isn't always seen in the normal classes, and it's super exciting. I mean, I look forward to each day being able to take these classes. And, I mean, really overall, um, they, you know, being through College Board, they're seen as, you know, an international standard. I mean, they do a lot better compared to IDs. I mean, IDs have been losing a lot of popularity and their, you know, their place in when college represent, uh, college, you know, their, uh, advisors look at them. And, you know, AP stay strong. Uh, they really haven't lost their gusto and their credit and ability, you know, like they said, uh, Marco said, a senior can be going into their uh, freshman year of college with six credits running on the table. That's a whole semester. And it really just is like the foundation to be able to help kids succeed once they reach the uh, college level. I'm Alex Carfee, and by the end of this school year, I will have taken nine AP classes and 10 AP exams. And now the reason for taking this many AP courses is just because of what they call, uh, offer educationally and in terms of mentality. AP courses are much more rigorous than a standard, standard course, a lot more intense. Um, carrying a higher workload and a lot more faster pace. Uh, this forces students to adopt kind of the college student mentality, um, uh, forcing them to devote a lot more of their time to their schoolwork than, for example, a standard course would. And as a junior and a senior, that kind of mentality is almost crucial to develop um, as you prepare to enter the next phase of your life in college or work or wherever you decide to go. That mentality of being focused and dedicated to your work is very important. Um, also, too, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, besides the educational part of the AP courses, um, the test in May, as uh, if you do well on it uh, and you get college courses, that can save you thousands of dollars. And students who only, who aren't necessarily financially um, gifted, uh, they only pay 90 some odd dollars for a test and to be able to save a thousand or two thousand or however much it might be uh, when they enroll in college in the fall, that's really life changing for them. And beyond that, I don't really have any complaints about any AP courses besides that 
we should have more, and we should have a lot more diversity with our courses. However, I would encourage every student to take one, no matter how smart they are or how uh, <coughs> dedicated they might not be. I would still encourage every student to take an AP class. Um, any questions that you might have regarding our courses or the process? Okay. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, what we're doing here at the high school. It's a, it's a big part of uh, where we want to go academically, and uh, so thank you. This time I'll invite Mr. Ostrander. He's going to come up and uh, present some athletic awards. Well, they come up here. First off, I'm just going to kind of give a recap of this fall. Um, once again, Edwardsburg Athletic Department enjoyed a very successful fall season. The football team clinched its 10th straight conference championship, along with their 8th MHS, MHSA championship, district championship and regional championship. Um, the volleyball team won their fourth Wolverine Conference championship in the past five years. Our soccer team captured their first Wolverine Conference soccer championship and earned at team academic all-state with a team GPA of a 3.42. Both golf and cross country had individuals qualify for state. Um, in the next part I'm gonna honor our all-state recipients. I'm gonna start off with first team all-state football. Uh, the young man being recognized tonight makes me think of a lineman quote I came across. It says, if everyone could be an offensive lineman, they don't need the attention, spotlight, or name on the paper. Success requires all five working together. All they worry about is fulfilling their role real well every play. The sole purpose of their job is to make others successful. The individual did all these so well he caught the attention of teammates and opponents. Congratulations, Brennan Brady Brick. Next, I'm going to introduce our academic all state. Um, pretty um, ironic since we followed up with AP courses. Uh, we'll start with volleyball. Volleyball, in order to make first team all state, they have to have a 3.7 or higher and must be a senior. Our two recipients for academic all state for volleyball are Ava Meek and Elizabeth Peterson. Both are playing in the volleyball tournament right now. So, Next up will be soccer, academic all-state. Must have a 3.5 or higher, must be a senior. His first recipient is Drew Bossler. <laughs> Alex Carpy. <laughs> Mason Coles. <laughs> and Grant Hoover. Next up is football academic all-state. 3.5 average or above and must be a senior. Um, Coach Bartz had quite a few. You can nominate 11, he, he has 11. So, and more that probably could, they could have qualified. Um, but so we kind of, we had, went through and kind of took the top GPAs and I'm down. Um, first up is Zach Bartz. <laughs> Andrew Castellucci. Andrew Colvin. Blake Ludwig. Brendan Madison. Donovan Myers. Mikey Pryor. <laughs> Brendan Siebel. <laughs> Jaden Slaw. <Slough. laughs> 
Colton Strauderman. Tibor Wimbin. Next up, one of the recipients up here received Division IV Scholar Athlete. Come here real quick, Brendan. Are you okay if I share your, your, your gain SAT scores? Okay. So, <laughs> Brendan, um, is he qualified to be one of the top two in all of Division IV for football academically? Brendan holds a 4.0 GPA. He scored a 1520 out of 1600 on his SAT, and that includes a perfect score on his math portion of the SAT. All while playing football and putting in lots of hours. Congratulations. Congratulations. As you can see, we have lots of students that are very successful both on the field and off the field. And I credit a lot of that to our coaching staff. And we have a few of those we have to honor today. It doesn't matter what time I come in the office, day or night, what day of the week. I always can find certain faces in their offices, in their classrooms, um, either working with students academically or athletically. Um, a few of the coaches I'm going to recognize here tonight were recently um, recognized in our Wolverine Conference um, Athletic Conference on Wednesday, November 16th. First off is going to be Coach Bartz. Coach Bartz is recognized as Wolverine Conference Coach of the Year. And Coach Bartz, a little background, um, has been coaching football here at Edwardsburg for 30 seasons. 28 of those as the varsity coach. In his tenure, he's led the team to 10 consecutive conference championships, 2017 state runner-up, 2018 state championship, and most recently, their eighth semifinal appearance. Um, more importantly than that is the impacts I've watched him make over the, with the kids over the years, myself included, even though I wasn't the best football player. Um, also, <laughs> Coach Bartz was also re recently recognized by the Michigan High School Football Coach Association as Regional Coach of the Year. So congratulations. Next up uh, is Coach Sean Jesse, Wolverine Conference Coach of the Year. This year, Coach Jesse, it was his 10th year as the soccer coach. He reached 100 career wins during the season. He has also been Edwards' first girls soccer coach for the last four seasons. This year, Sean led the Eddie's boys soccer team to their first ever Wolverine Conference Championship. I know some of you are thinking basketball just started, but we recognized 22 recipients in the conference um, awards, and so one of those was John Babuta for a season last year. <laughs> coach Babuta has led the Eddie's Girls basketball team as head coach for seven seasons. Two times he's led them to an undefeated regular season along with the most wins in school history. In a, in a single season. Last year, John took the basketball program to the first ever regional championship. So congratulations, John. <laughs> say congratulations to all the coaches and athletes here tonight. Um, and thank you for joining us and allowing us to recognize you and your efforts. Um, if you could stay or stick around, um, we, uh, Mrs. Uh, Slack would like to get some pictures she asked me to request of you before we dismiss you and let you go. Nice, thank you. Okay. Right. So, looking at you and I'm like, you're looking at me, okay. <laughs> Next up will be uh, Mr. Bourne with some middle school highlights. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Where do you, would you like me to go? Hi, good evening, everybody. Happy holidays. There's going to be some movement. That's okay, you guys. Help yourself to a good picture taken. Congratulations <laughs> to uh, all of our high school student athletes and coaches. Um, I'm up here to uh, highlight at the middle school our student council's job is to kind of create that commitment to charity prior to those students going up to the high school. Um, and this year, with uh, assisting in the food drive uh, that the high school coordinates, and adopt a family is our version of Operation Christmas for the high school. Um, 
it's been a really successful year at the middle school. Very, very proud of our staff and our students and our student council. Uh, this year's adoptive family, we were able to adopt five families and we raised $4,600 just in one week throughout the building. It's a little less than our overall total last year, but that's because we had a private donation of $1,500 from one person. Um, so it was actually more that we raised in the building than last year. And uh, again, in one week's time, to, to see that commitment to each other, um, what a great time of year. So I um, want to congratulate our student council on uh, their commitment to the food drive, to adopt a family, and getting ready to be the, the next seniors that you guys just saw, or the next high schoolers you just saw um, in the future. Happy holidays, everyone. purchase them for anybody in our building, um, staff, students. Uh, we sold, and they use their lunch time. They sell them at, during their lunch time. We sold about, I don't know the exact number, but about 2,000 candy canes this year. So we made about $1,000 on candy canes. And then we also took extra donations from families, only it was like three hundred dollars, but that's fine. It was great. It was. I mean, we don't. I don't usually ask for outside donations, but we did this year. We thought, well, we'll, we'll try it. Maybe we can donate or adopt some more families. Um. So our total we raised was thirteen hundred and forty dollars, and then we were able to adopt two families. One family had six children, and one had two children. And our student council. Um, members had the opportunity to go shopping at Meyer for those families. They have to bring a chaperone parent or an adult to shop with and we give them the list. This is the kid you're shopping for and they get to go and pick those, ki those gifts out for those students. Um, we also had the Michigan State Police contacted us and asked for a student to shop with a cop. So we chose one of our students, and actually the shopping was last Thursday, so I had to call parents, and they ended up bringing the student in, the cops picked him up, took him to Meyer, went shopping, and they went to back to the police station, had lunch, wrapped their gifts, and dropped them back off at the school. So it was a great experience, and our kids are, you know, they're from kind of first time in student council, so they're learning, and then once hopefully they, when they get to the middle school and high school, they'll be able to be more active, and Raise more. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. It's my pleasure tonight to um, introduce Ms. Kramer. She's our student support specialist, and she does a fabulous job coordinating all the Christmas um, activities that happen to support not only students within our building but outside the community. And um, she's also going to report on our stock drive, which was a huge success. And I wish I could report what the um, gentleman who received the socks from the VFW said, but it's bleeped out. He was overwhelmed at, at the donation. So, thank you. Uh, so I'll start with the socks, uh, stock drive. Um, so um, after reading an article in the Edwardsburg Voice, Helping the VFW help veterans was one of the specific needs listed was socks. Wanting to help our local veterans, Mrs. Paulus, Mrs. Brad, I always mess up her name, Ms. Wisniewski, uh, came up with the idea of socks for veterans. Eagle Lake students brought in socks during the week of December uh, 5th through the 9th. The donated socks were being sent to local veterans at VA hospitals, 
for placement in care, in care packages as well as Christmas packages to those serving overseas. Uh, in total, Eagle Lake students collected 1,969 pairs of socks. In addition to the socks, many classrooms also made cards to be delivered. A friendly competition, and it, it was friendly, but boy, <laughs> was it a competition, uh, was held between classrooms, and the top class had a total of 371 pairs of donated socks. The VFW is very grateful for our school's generosity. Um, and then moving on to adoptive family or adopting families, um, I'm so happy to announce that with the help of so many people, we were able to adopt 10 families within our school building. Um, part of that was our giving tree that we do and then outside sources coming in to adopt. So I'd like to take a moment um, to thank the following individuals, businesses that were able to make this happen. Hope Church of Niles, Mason's Lodge, C. Kramer Interiors, DMS, and Eddie's parent, Katie Holdred, who adopted two families, uh, Warriors Oath, and the BFW who supplied free hams and turkeys to our families, and the great staff of Eagle Lake who took care of four families with just our giving tree. Hearing the tears, the silence, relief, and appreciation when calling these parents was just a reminder about what the season is about. We could not have done this without the support and generosity of those mentioned above, and we are forever grateful. Thank you, and I hope you guys all have a great and happy holiday. And now the happiest place on earth. <laughs> if you want, I can display my dress for you. We are on the... Um, Ho, 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 holidays count down this week at the primary. Um, we have benefited over the last month and a half from the generosity within this community. Um, our students participated in the food drive and they collected 1,800 individual food items, um, all in the name of meeting Eddie and having their picture taken. <laughs> so, you know, there was a little classroom competition, Mrs. Smith's multi-age class won, and so Eddie came in, took pictures with every student. They really aren't really sure why they got Eddie to come in, but they brought in a lot of canned goods. So it was a great, great collection towards the food drive. Um, the students also participated in the holiday shop put on by the PTO. Um, if you're not familiar, students get an envelope, mom and dad put some money in it, and they say you're going to get gifts for mom, dad, brother, sister, and maybe your pet. But due to the generosity of the PTO, regardless of whether a student showed up with an envelope, every child got to shop. So we were getting phone calls later from parents saying, hey, my kids came home from the holiday shop with gifts and we didn't send them money. And so we were able to tell them that the PTO graciously sponsored their children as well. Um, our staff has adopted a family that was in need of holiday gifts, as well as a community member called in and said, we have about five or six houses in our neighborhood and they would really like to help some families. Could you give us a list of needs and we will supply? And so that neighborhood um, provided Christmas for two other families. And then I get choked up. I cannot say enough about Operation Christmas. I have never experienced something as magical as Operation Christmas. The pure amount of money that this community donates to that project. And those 35 families, they may have siblings up in the other buildings, but those 35 families come from my building. And I benefit because I get to go sit in the gym and there's inflatables there for the kids. Santa and Mrs. Claus are there. There's cookie decorating. There's pizza. There's crafts. There, it's just the most magical morning with high school kids. And watching those little ones meet up with their high school buddy and share what their wish lists were. Um, I got thousands of hugs that morning. And they're like, thank you for organizing this, Mrs. Bowman. <laughs> and I was just like, it really wasn't me, but OK. <laughs> I'll take all the credit. And just to say how great these high school kids are, I'm sad that Blake has already left. Blake's family that he worked with, um, the um, child has moved about 50 miles away. 
Friday when Blake should have been doing some virtual stuff, Blake was driving 50 miles to deliver Christmas gifts to that family. And so and that was just one way. And so I got to FaceTime a little um, during that um, exchange of gifts and just the genuine excitement and gratitude from that family and Blake got to experience the magic as well. So I'm so grateful for all of the events that are planned above us and that we get to benefit from them and contribute to them as well. And if you see us tomorrow, we are snowmen for the ho, ho, ho countdown to the holiday <laughs> break. <laughs>
uh, and really is a much easier read than, than going through the rest of the report. I like page six because this, this really breaks down what governmental financial statements are about. You really have two sets of financials. You have, you have the first that's called the district-wide financials, and that's talked about on that page, with a long-term focus, so your, your long-term debt of the districts, capital assets, those sorts of things are reflected. So in a way, it clouds the picture of the, a year-to-year -year analysis that you probably want to know, like, how are your individual funds doing? How is your general fund, uh, your special revenue funds operating on a year-to-year -year basis? And that is where you get into the, the governmental fund fi financial statement, excuse me. Uh, so here on page seven is condensed district-wide information. Not a lot of fluctuations you know, from, from last year to this year, but I will point you to the net pension and OPEB liabilities. So that is your district share of those plans across the entire state. You see a large decrease. If you look at any school district in the state, you see a similar uh, decrease in that liability from 2021 to 22. Uh, the best way to think of it, a lot goes into that. There's actuarial involvement uh, with the Office of Retirement Services and they're audited, audited by the state. And what we're doing is we're bringing together that information in the report. Uh, but plan investments were, were really bad in 2020 when the 2021 column there was, was measured, your, your share. Uh, a year later, September 30, 2021 is the measurement date for the 2022 column. Uh, the market had improved, so you, you see a very large decrease in the liability. I think fast forward to this year, so it's, we'll be reporting on uh, next year's report, you'll see the 2023 column where investments again are down, so you, I would expect that liability to go up. Uh, just kind of fast forwarding here, I'm gonna go all the way to page. There's some statistical information and uh, details on each of your funds, but moving on to the basic financial statements, I'll start on page 14. Those are the full versions of the, the condensed information I just talked about. Again, you can see those large liabilities. You see a large uh, deficit in that position. Again, common at most districts in the state due to the large uh, pension and OPEB liabilities. I do like page 15, that's your statement of activities. Uh, kind of a funny looking schedule, but what it's showing are your, your total expenditures across the district, including the long-term uh, focused expenditures. And you'll see operating grants and charges for services that are, that are geared towards those functional level expenditures with very large deficits. Uh, that's, that's simply saying that you don't get enough funding that's meant for those purposes to cover all of your costs, and that's where property taxes and unrestricted state aid comes in. So the general revenue is there at the bottom right. So I mentioned the uh, governmental fund statements. We'll start on page 16, and this is where that the long-term focus has been removed. There's reconciliations on page 17 and page 19 that show you exactly what has been removed from those statements. Well, this is where you can evaluate on a fund-to-fund -fund basis, on a year-to-year -year basis. So you see your general fund, uh, total fund balance is 7.2 million. Very healthy fund balance. I think the state recommends 10 to 20 percent. Uh, that fund balance is a percentage of your next year's expenditures. So that's kind of your bank balance at year end, you have your planned budgeted expenditures for the next year, and that makes up about 24%. So a very healthy uh, fund balance. We've seen a lot of changes, so I, I won't read too much into the percentage, probably increased pretty drastically the last couple of years, a lot due to the one-time funding, your SR2, your SR3 funding that was recognized these last couple of years. The non-major column, is consolidated, so that's all your other funds. You have your, your general fund, that's the big one, then you have your non-major, that are all your special revenue funds, your debt funds, uh, capital project funds. Those are all consolidated in the one column. And you can find, I won't go through it today, but in the back of the report, all of those different funds, individual detail in each. Another, uh, I'd probably say, you know, for the, the board's, from the board's perspective, page 20, one of the more important pages of the report, that's the budget to actual. So you have a lot of involvement in budgeting each year, and this is your, kind of final product of that. You want to see a lot of positives in that variance column, meaning you didn't overexpend your budget, you projected revenue as well, and uh, if anything received more revenue than you expected, and you see lots of positives there. So this is a, a really good uh, budget variances uh, in both revenue and expenditures. With that, I'm going to really start scrolling through the notes to the financials. Lots of good information. I think note, probably of particular interest to you would be note E and F on page 36, those are your capital assets and your long-term debt of the district. We've had a land acquisition this year, so that's reflected in, in the capital asset note. Debt, you continue to pay down, no new bonds were issued this year, so you, you can see those balances reducing uh, with the principal and interest payments being made. Then I mentioned the OPEB and, and pension uh, plan, note G and note H. 
all the information you want to know about how that's calculated. I mentioned we're bringing it all together. This is language you would see in pretty much any report uh, re reflecting the, the actuarial estimates and assumptions and those sorts of things that go into determining uh, your share of the balance. I think that's probably good with this report. I mentioned in the back are all those different schedules of the individual funds. And please stop me. I know this is a lot to go through. If you have any questions as I'm kind of rambling through this, just stop me. But I'll, I'll move on to the single audit report next if there are no questions. That is the smaller of the two, so you know, dealing with auditor one time is enough, but you get us twice because if you get enough federal funding, and most districts do of your size, if you get $750,000 in federal expenditures, you need a compliance audit. That's uh, called a single audit. So that's a small one. Let's get a little uh, quick summary of what that's about. You, you have two letters in here. Again, both clean opinions. One is in our, in our opinion on your financial controls over or your internal controls over financial reporting. I think the best way to think of that one being in here is because this is a risk-based audit. We do not audit every program that you have at Edwards, Edwards River Schools. Excuse me. Uh, we, it's a risk-based process where we select one or two programs in a given year, and those are the programs we're auditing. So we do have no issues with internal controls over financial reporting, so a clean report there as well. The second, probably more important of the two, this is the compliance opinion. So if we had issues with our testing, in the last couple of years, it's really been the, the Education Stabilization Fund, all those, those ESSER grants, ESSER 1, 2, 3, uh, GEAR, you know, the summer school, credit recovery, all, all these different things. So we had no issues with, with either of the major programs we tested. I mentioned either because on page, let's see, all the way to the back is a, really a summary of everything I'm talking about here, page 13. Oh, excuse me, we did this year, it was just the Education Stabilization Fund. So this is where you can kind of see a snapshot of, of our results. You have all no's checked in that column on the right, meaning we did not have any uh, significant deficiencies and material weaknesses and controls identified. Uh, you're a low risk auditee, uh, meaning you've had clean audits in the past, and that's where you want to be as well, because if you're not, then we, we have to do twice as much work, uh, twice as much coverage with what we're testing. Any questions on that? All right, good. Very last thing, and I'll get out of here for you. The letter to the government. So this is our chance to communicate you know, any disagreements we have with management. Uh, if we have large journal entries in the audit where we have to come in and correct your books, they will be reflected in here. You have another clean report. Uh, so, so not much to talk about here except for one thing on page, of course it's not labeled, but the second to last page, you'll see uh, some talk of uh, food service excess fund balance. So many districts, I say the vast majority have what MBE considers an excess fund balance. They track that, they require you to be on a spend down plan. Uh, in our perspective, you know, this was unavoidable the last couple of years just due to, to increased meal rates and the food service program. So um, the vast majority, like I said, the schools we work with and probably across the state have this uh, language in the report. But something to monitor over the next year is, is getting that fund balance down. And that is all I have for you. Any questions? <clears throat> we need a motion to accept the final, I mean financial report for the year ended June 30th, 2022. Motion. Motion to accept. Support. Any questions, discussion of that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on to comments. I am, if I may please. It's my, uh, if you guys would like to come and have a seat, we certainly have places to sit now. Come on. It's my uh, great honor uh, to have worked with this board uh, for the amount of time that, that I have, five years. Uh, but several of these members are leaving us this year. And uh, as a board member, and these last five years have been a challenge. Uh, they've been through a lot to get to where we are today with insects and uh, probably forgotten about that already. And all the other issues that have gone on the last few years. But if I may, I'd like to have Kevin Goggins come up first. Thank you. 
Kevin has been a. Let me do that again. Because it was both <laughs> Kevin has been a uh, board member for six years. Uh, he, he both personally has been through a lot during his last few years, and in this last year in particular, and you've done a wonderful job leading the district. So please accept this from the district. And then informally, I would like you to have a Board of Education recognition from the Very nice. administrators in the Very district. Nice. Uh, one, one way or the other, they're going to get their knowledge. One way or the other. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I uh, have the great honor of having Della Holden come on up here. Della has been on the board for 39 and a half years, I believe. 39 and a half? Yeah, 39 and a half. Uh, I haven't been married 39 and a half years. I, I don't know. I haven't done anything that long to know other than to stay alive. So. Uh, now you have been the rock that this district's been built on for so long, and I appreciate everything you've done for me but more importantly for the students of the district. You have been through the growth and the renewal of this district, and looking forward, uh, you've set such a foundation, I believe it'll be successful for many more years. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I have to say the one moment I will never forget with Jim, was uh, when COVID was first announced and they started closing their school down and stuff. Jim asked me, have you ever been through anything like this before, Nella? I looked at him and I said, do you think I'm 100 years old? Like, is that a first? <laughs> 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 and he's asking me if I've been through this before. <laughs> <laughs> so I went home and asked my husband, how bad do I look? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'll never forget that, Jim. I also, Nella also is receiving the Board of Education. I think that Denny, may need some more education also. <laughs> <laughs> this could come in handy. This, this might be what I needed. <laughs> but I'd like to thank everybody for being supportive of me for the last 39 and a half years. Uh, it's hard to believe that I made it through nine elections. And uh, um, an additional year and a half of my services was, was granted to the state of Michigan when they grandfathered everybody in when they changed the terms of office and everything, how they wanted you to go for six years instead of four. So I got an additional 18 months out of that. So I have to thank the state for that. So <laughs> thank you, and I've enjoyed my time on the board, and you still will see me in the area. I am not leaving and going anywhere uh, specifically. So I will still be in Edwardsburg again all the way. Once right. many hours, many. Many. <laughs> Finally, uh, I have a, an announcement. Uh, at the beginning of the year, the board and I met uh, talking about the future of the district and, and my future. And uh, at that time, I informed them that this would be my last year. And uh, the announcement was planned for tonight, uh, this in, in December. So I am uh, letting you know at this point that I am going to retire at the end of the school year, effective June 30th. And uh, I can't believe that it's been five years. It has been a a crazy five years, but it's been incredibly awarding, uh, rewarding for me uh, as an individual and professionally. It's been challenging, but more than anything, a night like tonight, seeing all the kids that were up here that have done so well for our district. You lose perspective on what's important and what isn't. This is important. That's what's important when you're in the district. All the other petty stuff that goes on, whether it's on Facebook or social media, means nothing when you get the opportunity to sit here and look at the kids that that we have the chance to work with and have them succeed. That's what it's all about. And, and if I have to say what I'll miss, it's that connection to the children because our kids are fantastic. Our families are fantastic. We, uh, we have the best staff in the world to work with. Uh, I think it's perspective. You need to step out a little bit, look other places, and get a good look at what we produce here. And it's astonishing. Uh, and I've had a small part of that, in that and I've had a, a great relationship with the people I work with. Thank you, all the administrators and people we've worked with. So thank you. Thank you.